Hey guys, welcome to today's MCAT question of the day. As always, we'll be working our way through one of the many practice problems found at MCATSelfPrep.com, the home of the free MCAT prep course. My name is Spencer Simcoe, a 97th percentile MCAT tutor, and I'll be walking you through today's practice problem as if you're one of my private tutoring students. This problem comes from Module Biology 1, Lesson 8. Be sure and hit pause and try this question out for yourself before watching my explanation. Hemoglobin is one of the most commonly tested proteins on the MCAT, so it's important to understand the basics of how it works. First, with the overall quaternary structure, it has four different subunits, as you can see here. It's got two alpha subunits and two beta subunits. Because of that, we often call it a dimer of dimers. And each individual subunit has its own heme group. And this heme group is what's responsible for hanging on to the oxygen so we can carry it around the body. If we zoom into the heme group right here, we can see the iron in the center, and that's why it's called the heme group. And it has six coordination or binding sites. Four are taken up by these nitrogens in the pyrrole ring. A fifth is taken up by this proximal histidine. And the sixth can be taken up by lots of different things. Um, in the oxygen binding state, it's taken up by oxygen, obviously. And in the deoxygenated state, we're usually going to bind to the distal histidine, so the one that's further away. However, other things can come in and bind here as well, like carbon monoxide. Uh, in fact, carbon monoxide binds to this site even more tightly than oxygen, which is why it's so dangerous. Um, and when oxygen is bound, as we can see here in the left, we're in what we call the relaxed state. The oxygen is able to pull the iron into the same plane as everything. But when the oxygen is gone, this distal histidine is further away. So it's what we call the tense state. You can think of it as pulling a bow and arrow makes this nice triangle shape, just like in the tense state. So when this proximal histidine pulls the iron into this tin state, it actually causes an overall conformational shift. So not just this one little part of the protein shifts, all four subunits shift. And so we can see there's actually a distinct um, conformation between tense and relaxed in the quaternary structure of hemoglobin. In the tense state, we have this nice open circle in the middle, and in the relaxed state, it's really small. And so what this means is that if one little subunit can change, it's going to make it so it's easier for all of the other subunits to change to the relaxed state as well. And if we're in a relaxed state, we accept oxygen a lot easier than in the tense state. And so what that leads to is this curved binding curve right here. So normally we'd expect if we have four sites that aren't interacting at all, that it would just um, increase at a linear rate. We just get more and more oxygen. But since it does this this conformational change over to a relaxed state, we are going to expect that after one or two bind, it's going to go really fast and then it's going to plateau off a little bit. And what we call this is cooperative binding. Um, and it makes it so that it's able to load more in the lungs and offload more in the tissues. So coming back to our answer choices here, let's decide which of these is true about oxygen in hemoglobin. Um, that the, number one is that binding sites are specific to oxygen. Well, oxygen can bind there. That's not the only thing that can bind there. So this is not correct. Number two says that it exhibits cooperative binding. That's exactly what happens here, as uh, we saw with that binding curve and it being curved instead of being straight. So this is true. Hemoglobin exhibits cooperative binding to oxygen. And the last one says that one hemoglobin molecule binds to one O2 molecule. Remember, each subunit has its own heme group which means that one hemoglobin molecule binds to four oxygen molecules. This means that the correct answer choice is answer choice C. If you enjoyed this MCAT question of the day, be sure and give it a like. For more MCAT questions of the day, be sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel. Check out our free MCAT prep course found at MCATSelfPrep.com. If you're really looking to maximize your MCAT score, be sure to check out our tutoring services and request a free 10-minute phone consultation with any of our available tutors. We'd love to chat with you about your situation and how you can maximize your MCAT score. We look forward to hearing from you, and we'll see you next time.